Deborah's, um, you know, two features about it. She's young to have developed CLL in the first place. Um, the, va the median age of diagnosis of CLL is, is, is 72, and clearly there's only a very small proportion of, of younger patients that, that have it. The natural history of younger patients with CLL isn't usually that different, but of course the implications of having a disease for a decade is a very different one when you are 80 than when you are 21. <laughs> and um, the, but Deborah's disease uh, was originally diagnosed and then progressed and she received the standard of care which is with FCR um, chemotherapy, so fludarabine, cyclophosphamide, rituximab. We would have hoped and expected she would have had a very long um, remission uh, status. Uh, but in fact, unfortunately, despite having a good response, the disease came back really quite quickly. Now, the data demonstrates that patients who do um, relapse after FCR as quickly as, as Debs did have a, a very poor prognosis indeed. And until we had new drugs available, we were talking about looking to retreat her and perform an allogeneic stem cell transplant. Now, an allogeneic stem cell transplant has a potential curative impact in this uh, disease, but of course it comes with quite a high uh, morbidity and mortality. And there's just been a big uh, study uh, done by the EBMT looking at you know, uh, over 2,000 uh, CLL transplants, suggesting the mortality is in the 40% in the range. So in, for a mother with young children, um, going on to such a step at this stage was really something difficult and something that Debs is very keen to put off and think about that's the safety net in the future, but things that we can do to get our disease under control and hopefully in remission for a very long period of time will enable her to be there uh, to watch her children grow, which is what we all want.